Have you ever wondered what a Bitcoin actually is? As digital money, this is obviously not a coin like that. If you're a technical person, you should really continue to watch this video because I'm trying to explain to you what a digital currency or cryptocurrency actually is, how it's defined and how this works. Obviously, I'm not going to explain the entire Bitcoin protocol here, but just the general idea and concept of eCash or electronic cash. This video is a compressed version of Justin Moon's video, ECDSA coin, which he created for his Boodle Bootcamp. You should really check out his video over here or in the description of the video if you want to get the full picture. Since Justin's videos are one hour each, I thought I'd make a quick version of them to give you a short overview, so you can decide whether you want to invest the time or not. I certainly would recommend to invest the time since Justin's content is really great and thanks to Justin for letting me reuse some of his videos. We will start with some elliptic curve digital signature algorithms. I won't describe the cryptography here in detail, I just take this as given. There is a lot of mathematical content out here, especially the Wikipedia articles explaining how this works. So that is given. What we need to know is that there is a private key and a public key and we can use them to sign messages and signing messages basically proves the authenticity of a message or controls who owns which information. So we start out with the ECDSA Python package and from this we import two classes and we will use these classes to first create a private key. This is really your secret. You should really keep it private and don't share it with everyone but from the private key we can deduce a public key which we later can use. And then we create some message for example I need coffee and what we can do is we can use our private key to sign that message. Once we have this message signed, we can use the public key to verify the signature of the message and this evaluates to true. If we try to verify a different message with the same signature and the same public key, we get a bad signature error. But what does the signing of messages and verifying signatures have to do with Bitcoin or with electronic cash? Before I give you an answer to this, I want to make an important statement for all the mathematicians out there. We are only able to derive the public key from the private key. The other way around is kind of impossible. If you wanted to do so, you would have to solve the discrete logarithm of some number and that's an NP-complete or even more difficult problem. So, um, yeah, probably it's supposed to be secure, I guess. As mathematicians are in the business of proving stuff, it's fair enough to trust them with what they're saying, so we now know that digital signatures are safe. Maybe in the past you had a chance to read chapter 2 of Satoshi Nakamoto's paper, where Satoshi Nakamoto defines what an electronic coin is. I will quote from Satoshi Nakamoto's paper. We define an electronic coin as a chain of digital signatures. So here you see, the digital signatures are the core building block. Each owner transfers the coin to the next by digitally signing a hash of the previous transaction and the public key of the next owner and adding these to the end of the coin. A coin is a chain of digital signatures and when somebody wants to transfer something, the transfer is being added to the end of the chain. This has nothing to do with a blockchain, by the way. Since we were talking about transfers, we need a transfer class, which basically consists of a signature and a public key, which are assigned to the properties of the class, and then an ECDSA coin is a list of transfers. As a coin is a list of digital signatures, we need to have our first signature, the so-called Coinbase, and this also needs to be issued by someone. In our simple example, this will be a bank. So we create an issue method that gets a public key as an argument and returns a coin, which is an ECDSA coin, which has a list of transfers. And we need a transfer, which basically consists of a signature and a public key. And what we do is we need to have a message, which is the serialization of the public key, and this message needs to be signed by the private key of the bank. So that's what we're going to do. Obviously, anybody could just go out and issue a coin. We see this in the altcoin market where everyone is just creating their own coins. So we need a good mechanism to validate the coin. And this is what we're going to do now. And we create a validate function for a coin. We use the first transfer of this coin, which is indexed by zero. And we need to create a message for which the signature was in the coin. And we use the public key of the transfer serialized in this message and then we use the bank's public key to verify the signature of the transfer together with the message that we just constructed. While this looks good, we're not done yet. Remember, a coin was defined as a chain of transactions. So only checking the coin base to see if the coin was issued by the bank is not sufficient. We also need to check if the transfer of the coin at every single time was authorized by the person who was supposed to own the coin. So let's dig right into this and implement it. 
So we start off with our validation of the Coinbase and we need a pointer to the Coinbase, to the first transfer. And then we iterate over all other transfers in our coin, we call them next transfer. And what we do is we use the public key of our pointer to verify um, our transfer. And the transfer consists of a signature and a message. And the message is always the same, so it makes sense to create a method called transfer message. And this one um, gets arguments as the previous signature and the next transfer public key. And this function is pretty easily implemented. What we basically do is we take the two arguments and we comprise them into a JSON dictionary. Um, how we name the keys is pretty arbitrary, but we should always do the same. It's kind of a protocol definition and we serialize this. But there's one tiny mistake in the original video. So 20 minutes of post-production and yes, you see it at the end of the loop. We need to change the previous transfer pointer to the next transfer. And that's basically it. We have created an electronic cache system. It's not the best one and we have to see if it's really running. I will demonstrate this to you in a moment. However, I want to encourage you to look in the description of this video because you will find links to Justin's YouTube channel, which I highly recommend to you. But you will also find um, other resources like the Wikipedia article of elliptic curve cryptography. Also, I want to say thanks to Jeff for sponsoring my activities and to George for sponsoring the new layout of my YouTube channel. That's very cool and I really enjoy that the community appreciates what I'm doing and I hope to continue this. So let's finish up with demonstrating that everything is working. In order to do so, we use our issue function to let the bank issue a coin that belongs to Alice and we print the ownership of this coin. Uh, for this, uh, Justin has created a small helper function and then we need to have a transfer message that basically uses the Coinbase signature and Bob's public key and then we create a transfer object which uses a signature of this message and then of course as a public key uses the destination which in this case is Bob's public key. And then at the very end we can um, append this transfer object to the coin and then we can look who is the owner of the coin and we see first Alice owned the coin and then Bob. Next week I'm planning to do a less technical video and try to engage more with the community because I'm curious what the community really wants to know and what kind of content would be most helpful for the community also what kind of format my channel should be like so maybe you can already drop me a short message if you think this is a great idea or not because obviously i don't need to do such a video if no one wants to see it oh oh i forgot to um, mention this is really important the coins that we just created they are not safe to use. Um, it works uh, in the sense of we see who owns them currently, but we can copy them. And uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, of course, prevented this by using proof of work, which later became known as the blockchain. And um, that is, I think, the standard stuff that everyone knows. So it's not in this video.